travel is supposed to broaden the mind, this journey is to measure the cosmos, to set our position in the broadest context of all, the universe. from city lights, and with just a whisper of cloud, the Milky Way straddles the sky. This delicate band of light is our home in the cosmos. For when we observe the Milky Way, we're looking sideways at a disk of stars. That disk is our galaxy, our island universe. Above, the Milky Way is a spiral, a family of some 150 billion stars. We belong to that family. Our sun is one of these stars. It lies two-thirds of the way from the galactic center. The Milky Way turns like a Catherine wheel, great arms spiraling outward. Within one of those arms, the sun orbits the galactic center once every 225 million years. Like a city, the center shines brightest of all. Veiled in gas and dust, it seethes with energy. But our neighborhood is suburban. Quiet stars leading ordinary lives. The sun is no exception. It's yellow, average, and middle-aged. For an idea of scale, light from the sun takes eight and a half minutes to reach Earth. Light from the nearest star takes four and a quarter years to reach us. Astronomers call the distance four and a quarter light years. The Milky Way is a hundred thousand light years across. From our position to the galactic center, it's 30,000 light years. The constellation of Orion rapidly loses shape as we hurtle through space. Stars that seem close together from Earth are really hundreds of light years apart. But in the vastness of our galaxy, we're still close to home. This group of young stars, the Pleiades, is 380 light years away. Closer are the Hyades, older, dimmer stars, at 150 light years. And although from Earth it seems to be in the Hyades, this orange giant is less than half the distance, Aldebaran, over a hundred times more luminous than the Sun. Sirius, the dog star, less than nine light years, the brightest star in our night sky. Barnard's star, a red dwarf, 2,000 times dimmer than the sun, and on its way toward the sun. As it sweeps by in 10,000 years time, it'll be our closest galactic companion. But for the time being, the nearest is Alpha Centauri, a trio of stars just four and a quarter light years away. To see where stars are born, we must first look at another galaxy. This is M83. Glowing pink in its spiral arms are regions of star birth. In our own galaxy, these are such nurseries. They're called emission nebulae, clouds of glowing hydrogen streaked with black dust. Stars fire up where material clumps. Lower left, a brilliant young star in its dusty cocoon. And here, white hot, groups of new stars. The black dust in this nebula is scattered far and wide dispersed by the winds of fierce new stars. Stellar birth is violent. 
blowing together, an array of energetic infants clear this gigantic bubble in a red nebula. Young stars blow a hole 12 light years across at the heart of the Rosette Nebula. The more massive the star, the shorter its life. Average stars like our Sun live long. Massive ones die young. Voraciously consuming their fuel, they become red supergiants, bulging to hundreds of times their original size. This one, Antares, is enveloped in a cloud of its own material, a reflection nebula. Antares is so big and diffuse that it leaks into space. A star like Antares, far more massive than the Sun, swells as hydrogen runs out. It switches to helium and other elements, but equilibrium is lost, and it grows. Radiation pushing out beats gravity pushing in, and that's its undoing. The red giant puffs into space. The core exposed, it collapses to become a white dwarf. And here's the real thing, a dwarf in a stellar smoke ring. Astronomers call it a planetary nebula. This one has wings, blown into the shape of a butterfly by ferocious winds. Another with more extended lobes, the legacy of a red giant. One of the most beautiful is from the demise of the giant that gave us the Helix Nebula. Three hundred light years from Earth, the Helix is our nearest planetary nebula, the white dwarf at its center, visible in this actual picture. The white dwarf lower right leads a busier life. Its gravity draws material from a companion, but when the matter reaches critical mass, it explodes as a nova. Both stars survive, and the process repeats. Bigger stars make bigger bangs. This red supergiant has ten times the mass of the sun. The sun lives ten billion years. This star, just twenty million. It's fast, furious, then finished. The explosion is a supernova. Here, in the Crab Nebula, a supernova is observed from China in 1054. Its debris is the nebula. Within the Crab, a pulsar survives, spinning 30 times a second. It's a super-dense relic collapsed from the original star. Around it, a disk of material and matter jetting from the poles. Trained on the Crab Nebula, the Hubble Space Telescope reveals more. Time-lapse shows shock waves from the pulsar, particles spinning from the disk at close to the speed of light, whipped into space by the whirling magnetic field. 